y'all and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be following up on a bunch of products that I've been testing lately, giving you my full thoughts, my reviews. We're going to do this pretty quickly. Most of these products I've been testing and trying here on my channel with y'all off camera, of course, and I'm ready to really review these products, let you know my full thoughts. I have over 20 things, some skincare, some makeup. Let's jump into it. All right, y'all. So I love testing new makeup here on my channel, trying new things, but I think it's always important after first impression videos, after get ready with me's, after kind of showing y'all things that I'm testing, I like to come back after a couple of weeks of trying products, using them in different ways, and I like to let y'all know what I really think and give you a full review. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to talk about a bunch of different stuff, but let's start off with this one size Secure the Sweat Dry Till Dawn Primer. So I will say I don't have a lot of problems with sweat. I don't feel like I sweat a ton, even in the summer but I do have oily skin and I live in a hot, humid place. So I thought with all the claims of this, not just the sweat, but the fact that it's supposed to keep your makeup on, keep it from breaking apart, I thought it would be something that maybe my oily skin and the humidity would really like. And I have to say, I love this. I took this primer with me when I went on vacation to Disney in April. And I thought, you know, that's going to be a great time to test it because we were like there when the parks open, we didn't leave till the parks closed. I wore makeup every day because I went like wearing makeup, like getting ready, things like that. And then I had lots of products that I was like, this is going to be the perfect time to pet, test and play. So I used this primer when we were at Disney and my makeup looks so good at the end of the day. Like someday my makeup were on for like 16 hours. This really kept it looking nice. And the oil that I did have come through my face was either easily blotted away with a little blotting sheet or I could just kind of press or it just looked nice and pretty and like I had oily skin, but it wasn't so overly glowy that it was like, I need to wash my face. It was just really, really beautiful. And I'm so impressed with this primer. I was hoping to love it, of course, when I bought it from Sephora, but I will also say I didn't expect to love it as much as I do. I didn't expect to find like a new staple go-to type of primer. I will say the only downside about this primer is it does not smell good. It almost has this like metal smell to it, but I think that's just because they didn't add any fragrance. I think that's just the smell of the product. It says to squeeze a dime size amount onto your fingertips, warm it up, press into the skin, and wait one minute before you apply your makeup. That's exactly how I apply it. It smooths a bit. It does kind of fill in pores just a tiny bit, but overall I felt like it just kept my makeup on. It's definitely not one of those sticky tacky primers, anything like that, but it did help my makeup last and I'm a big fan. Okay, I've also been testing and trying a couple of things from MAC. So this is the MAC Studio Fix Everywhere All Over Face Pen Crayon, and I bought the shade in C40. So it has been years since I have bought a MAC like liquid foundation or liquid concealer. So when I saw this and this packaging of this pen, I thought, let me try it. Let me see what I think of this. It says it's an all over face pen. So what I did with this was I tried it as a foundation and a concealer. I tried to see kind of both ways and I think it's an okay product. I don't think it's great. Like I don't love it by any means, but I don't think it's terrible either. It's just kind of right there in that okay category where it's like, it's fine, you know? And that's why, well, one of the reasons why I really like to do videos like this because I don't wanna just do favorites or just do worst of videos because there's so many products that I test that I'm like, these are good. These aren't terrible. 
but they're all right. Like they're just fine. And that's where this fell. When it was on as foundation, I just didn't love love the way it wore on my skin. It gave me a very like medium coverage, could definitely build it up, but it just wasn't one of those foundations that I looked in the mirror throughout the day and thought, wow, like this is beautiful. It's wearing beautifully. It was just okay. And when I put it under the eyes as concealer, it wasn't terrible, but it was just a little bit like thicker and more heavy heavier than I prefer. So for that reason, this just falls in the okay category. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just meh. I feel basically the same way about this MAC Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur Weightless Loose Powder. So I bought this in the shade medium and this is a weightless loose powder. So I also tried this in multiple different ways. I tried it for like setting my makeup, like taking a sponge or a puff or a brush and really pressing it into the under eyes to set there. I tried taking it on a loose fluffy brush and kind of buffing it all over the skin as like a setting slash finishing powder. And I feel kind of the same way I do about the pen. It's okay. It's not the worst powder ever by any means. Like it gets the job done, it's fine, but it also doesn't provide the most beautiful finish for me. I'm never gonna reach for this powder over my Huda Beauty Easy Bake powders or my Sigma Loose Setting Powder. It's just okay. It definitely sets everything down, but there's just a finish to the skin that this doesn't give. It's fine. It's not great. I don't love it, but it's also not terrible. Okay, I bought a couple of products from Kosas and I've been testing these for a while now because I really wanted to see how are these powders gonna last after a couple of months because I feel like that's a complaint I hear about with Kosas a lot. So I've been testing these, trying these. This here is the cloud set powder. Now I really love powders. I have oily skin, so I need a good powder to keep my makeup on. And I really like to kind of press in my powder, set my face, but then I like to go in with kind of a finishing powder on a big fluffy brush, kind of buff it in, especially like the perimeter of my face. And that's what I bought this powder for. For finishing powders, I usually go for something that's not in your face, crazy glowy, but a lot of times I like a powder that has a little bit of a sheen to it, almost like a skin-like type of finish. And so reading the claims of this Kosas powder, I thought this one would be really nice for that, and it has been. I've been smelling it every time I use it, and it's just really beautiful on the skin. It's easy to pick up with a brush. It doesn't like get any weird spots in the pan where it doesn't wanna pick up with a brush. I think this packaging is cute. The finish looks very healthy on the skin, almost like a satin glowy type of finish without being overly glowy, like no sparkle or anything like that really when this goes on the skin, even though if you just look at the pan, it can look like there may be a little tiny bit of shimmer something in there, but when you swatch it and when you pick it up on a brush and put it on the face, you don't see that. You just see a very healthy glow and I've been enjoying this. Okay, so the other product that I purchased from Kosas is the Sun Show Bronzer. So I bought both of these, been testing them for about two months. And I'm wearing, I am wearing the Cloud Set Powder as a finishing powder today. And then I am wearing the bronzer today as well. That's what I have on. And I have to say, I like this as well. When I open this, I don't smell anything. When I put my nose right up to it, it just smells kind of like ingredients or makeup, like no type of weird smell. Now this is definitely a glowy bronzer and I think it's very, very pretty. It has this beautiful sheen to it. I will say for me, I think it looks a bit darker in the pan than it swatches and applies. So I think this looks beautiful and healthy on the skin. This is not a bronzer that is hard to blend out. If I go in with a brush and I just 
pick up a little too much product and I put it on and it's a little too much. It's so easy for me to buff and blend it into the skin and get a really nice look. I've tried this with fluffy brush, with more dense brushes, large brushes, smaller brushes, and I always get a really beautiful result. So if you are considering this bronzer, you like a bronzer that's not super shimmery and like a highlight type of glow, but just a really pretty summery skin-like type of glow, has a little bit of a sheen to it, really, really beautiful. I think you will really like this one. I also like this like updated yellow packaging. I think this is super cute and this has been a really good product for me. Okay, so I did a video testing these two samples that I got from Sephora. Now, since that video, I have tested these some more. This is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow Foundation. Now, I got these deluxe size samples from Sephora. I got two different shades, so I was, I'm able to mix and kind of make my custom shade. But for me and my oily skin, there's just no way I can get myself to enjoy this foundation. It is too, too glow. Even when I use mattifying primers, things like that, things that are supposed to keep the makeup on, my oil just eats this foundation like crazy. It just breaks it apart. It doesn't last throughout the day. It doesn't look nice. And I feel like my oils really start coming through no matter what primer after about three to four hours. Now, if you're somebody who wears your makeup only for a couple of hours. I have people tell me all the time they never wear their makeup more than eight hours. That is awesome for you. Totally unrelatable for me. I'm usually putting my makeup on in the morning, taking it off when I go to bed at night. So I need my products to last 12 to 16 or more hours easily. So for me to have a foundation that kind of starts to look not glowy, but straight up oily after three to four hours. And I'm constantly having to like blot and try to press and smooth and get it to look right. It's just not it. So I am very happy that I got these as samples that I didn't purchase the full size because this is just not it for me and my oily skin. Okay, I also bought a couple of the Juvia's Place liquid blushes. These are so good. So, so good. Now these are pigmented. So I've said in other videos, if you have skin tone that is deeper than mine, these are going to show up on you. You're not going to have to build and build and build and build and build just to get a little blush payoff. One dot on each cheek will spread beautifully for you. I just put on the tiniest amount. I've used these with my fingers, a brush, a sponge. My personal favorite way is a sponge but they work beautifully with all of them, all of the different ways I've tried. They are pigmented, but also very beautiful. I am wearing the shade Bl Blushed Lily today. I also bought the shade Barbie Rose, and I have like all of the other ones in my Ulta cart because I want to get more shades. I think these are so beautiful. They last well throughout the day, and I've had a really good time with them. Let's talk about this Natasha Denona concealer. This is the High Glam Concealer, Brightening Hydrating Crease Proof Serum Concealer. I wanna say this is marketed as a medium buildable coverage concealer. I, I have the shade Y7 and YN6. They're both definitely a bit light for me and I am planning to order a deeper shade for the summer because I already love this concealer so much. I pretty much love this the first time I wore this concealer, but I have worn it every day since purchasing it because I like it that much. I'm wearing Y7 under the eye today. I think it's just a very smoothing. It sinks into the skin. It is not hard to blend at all. I have time to work with it, meaning I can put this under my eye. I can let it set for a minute or two and then press it in. It still blends. It's not one of those concealers that you put it on. You're like, blend, 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 because it's going to be locked in. You're not going to be able to get it to move. No, you have time to work with this product. Whatever powder I use on top, it's always beautiful and it wears so incredibly well. <laughs> I have definitely been like 
checking my makeup the days I've been wearing this to see how it's looking. And even at the end of a long day, after being outside, after doing stuff around the house, after being active, this concealer just looks so nice and beautiful. I don't feel like it settles into lines weird. It doesn't change colors. It doesn't emphasize any texture. So I've really, really, really been enjoying this. I think Natasha Denona has a winner on her hands with this one. I also like the packaging. I just think it looks sleek, but that could definitely be like one of my favorite products of the year. I'm just saying I've been enjoying it a lot. Okay, I won't spend too much time on this because if you've been at my channel for a while, you know I'm in love with the Revolution Pro Goddess Glow Cream Contour and Bronze. I have the shade medium. I've used this in a couple of videos now and I've told y'all there that I wanted to test it more before I gave you my full review, but that I've been loving this and nothing has changed. This is so good. I am not somebody who says everything is like a dupe, a dupe, a dupe, a dupe, a dupe. Just because something has the same packaging as something else, it doesn't make it a dupe. So I'm not saying that this is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury. It's not a dupe for the Tarte Wand. This reminds me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury and that it is very easy to blend and it has like a sheer, maybe not even sheer, maybe like a light coverage that's very buildable. So you can go in with this product, blend it in, and you're not going to get this like intense bronze liquid product that you can't really move that's just too much you can also definitely go in with the second layer and build it up even more the tone of this shade medium has this oliveness to it that i really enjoy and it's become a favorite for me honestly it's not a dupe for the charlotte tilbury it's not a dupe for the tarte but i think i like it better and at this price point we love to see it so I bought the Danessa Myricks Color Fix Nudes Waterproof Liquid Pigment for Eye, Lip, and Cheek. I wasn't really interested in this product, but I saw comments from people saying that they really like this as an eyeshadow base. Now, I have to say, I tried it that way. I bought it, I was like, let me try it as an eyeshadow base. And it's not a favorite for me. It, it, it falls into that okay category. It's fine. It works. My favorite eyeshadow primers are my MAC Paint Pot and my Sigma Eye Primer. I think those are the best for my oily lids, my deep set eyes. I have like fine lines and kind of folds in my eyes. Those are going to keep the shadow on best and easy to work on top of. This one, I think... It's just okay. My eyeshadows aren't quite as vibrant at the end of the day when I use this primer. They aren't quite as easy, easy to blend. I've tested this, of course, with newer palettes, but then I've also tested it with palettes that I know the formula of, and I just feel like this eye base isn't my favorite. I'm gonna keep it. I'll have it to use, but it's just not my favorite. You know, it's one of those, again, not bad, but not great, just okay. Okay, L'Oreal sent me a bunch of their new lipsticks. These are the Color Riche lipsticks, and I think these are just, I can't remember, I think these are matte lipsticks. It doesn't say on the package, but they come in this nice slim packaging. So I am wearing this shade today. I'm wearing the shade 153, and I put a gloss on top. I'm wearing Unearthly Cosmetics Juice gloss on top. So these lipsticks are really beautiful. I've used these on my channel. I have a YouTube short showing some of the shades. This is a really nice, really pretty lipstick. I like bullet lipsticks. I think the shape of this is nice. I like the slim packaging. They're not, they're not a matte that feels drying on the lips. I would say more like a satin matte. Put it on, very beautiful. It glides beautifully. I think they make a lot of really pretty shades. I've tried several now. Well, I've tried four of them. These are the ones that I'm kind of enjoying the most right now. 103, 123, and 143. And then again, today I'm wearing 153. So I really have a thing for the shades that end in three, huh? I think these are just nice. They're opaque. They're easy to glide on. Slim. You can throw it in your car, in your pocket, in your purse, whatever you do. I really like that. I think they're super comfortable. Really, really nice drugstore lipstick. Okay. I 
hate this Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme Lip Shaper Plumping Lip Liner. Now, I bought the shade Cinnamon Swirl. I love lip liner. I always use lip liner. Always. I love a good lip liner. And I thought, you know what? I hate the Too Faced Lip Injection Gloss. It's so painful with no plumping. But I'm like, you know, let, let's just test it. I'm just curious. I figure sometimes if I'm curious, maybe y'all are curious too. So I went ahead and bought this and the burning was immediate with no plumping. That's the thing because every time I talk about, oh, I don't like the burning on my lips, people are like, oh, it's a small price to play for plumping. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything and it's the worst and I hate it and it burns and it's painful and it's like my lips are on fire and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I had a few Jones Road Beauty lipsticks sent to me. This is the lip tint. I have Just Pinky and Coco Rose. This is a very glossy lipstick. Beautiful, it feels very hydrating. It feels very nourishing on the lips. It's not a very long wear lip product. Not that you have to touch up a ton. It's not like it wears away quickly, but it's just a more glowy, glossy type of lip color. Uh, this lip tint, I think very beautiful. The packaging, I like this kind of like metal tin packaging. I think this looks really sleek and nice. Here is this more deeper shade, Coco Rose. I really like this formula. I am curious to try more from Jones Road Beauty. I would love to know if you have recommendations from the brand, what you would like to see me try. This was my first like experience with the brand and I like these lipsticks. I found them to be very comfortable and very beautiful. So if I should try more from them, definitely let me know. Okay, Unearthly Cosmetics released new singles in their low light highlighter formula. So previously we had the low light highlighter palette and now we have four new shades and these are available in singles rather than in the palette which I think is nice. So if you're not somebody who likes a highlighter palette, you wanted to try the formula in singles, these could be for you. I do have a full video like swatching these, showing the shifts because we have three multi-chrome highlighters and then one like sparkly topper highlight. So today I'm actually wearing the shade Spectre. If you see, low light is like a favorite highlighter formula for me. I've been using it for years. I bought both of their low light highlighter palettes. So I had to buy these because they're like, I knew I loved the formula. So Spectre looks white, looks blue, looks purple. I'm also wearing it on the inner corner of my eyes today. I have Mirage, which is this beautiful, like green, gold, pinky highlighter we have right here, which is Spellbinding. This one may be one that I've used the most. It's like this pink, red, gold, white type of shade. And then I've also used Twilight a lot. This is more of a like almost a highlight topper. Of course I've worn it on its own, but it's this beautiful sparkle. Definitely go watch my video if you haven't seen the swatches and all. This is like Fenty Beauty How Many Carrots, but more. Like it was at this level, but then Twilight took it to the next level. It's also really beautiful as like a topper to your eyeshadow. If you want to just add some sparkle to a matte look or something like that, just kind of dust this on. Super, super beautiful formula. And I really like the small detail of the packaging and that the names on the packaging. So if you sit these in your drawer, your bag or whatever, you can kind of see the shifts reflected in the names. Like Spectre is kind of purpley, Mirage like they all kind of have a shift so you're not having to constantly like go through your stuff and try to remember what color you can kind of see in the name and you can see the color of the writing just a small detail that I thought was really really nice and then I also bought their new liquid eyeliner this is just their black liquid eyeliner pen it is a brush tip which is my preferred method for liquid liner it stays it's beautiful it's easy to work with no skipping no running nothing like that very easy to use wearing it today I'm also wearing today this Fenty Beauty Mascara. So I like this. I think this is nice. I don't know that I love it as much as I love my Melt Supernatural Lash or my Pat McGrath Dark Star ma Mascara, but it is a good mascara. I'm going to keep using it up till it's gone. Um, 
like it. It doesn't smudge, it doesn't flake, but I do feel like I have to build it up a little bit more to get the intensity of the lash that I like. Whereas with the Melt, with the Pat McGrath, I can get there a little bit quicker. But I do think this is a good mascara. So this is another one of those products that I love talking about in these types of videos where it's like, you know, this isn't a favorite. It's definitely not a bad product. It's good, it's not great. I like it, I'll keep using it, but it's not a favorite. Okay, let's talk about a few like body skincare products I've been testing. So Skin Proud sent me a package and in it was this Serious Shade Sunscreen Lightweight Hydrating SPF 50 Skin Serum with Restoring Ceramide and it is 50 SPF with UVB and UVA protection. One, I really like this packaging. So like I said, I did go on a family vacation. We went to Disney. It was very sunny and I actually carried this with me so that I could reapply. Somewhere that I have gotten used to applying sunscreen is right like in my part. Listen, if you've ever been there where you've like had your hair parted, maybe pulled back or whatever, and you forget to apply a little sunscreen right here and your scalp has burned and then you've peeled for weeks, it's not a good look, it's not fun, it's the worst. I took this in my bag so I could kind of reapply, me and my family, make sure we didn't get any burns. This did the job, this did the job. I did not get any sunburn even though we were out in the sun all day for several days. This is really pretty and it has this kind of glow to it. I really like that it has ceramides in it as well because my skin likes ceramides and I've been really trying to take care of my skin. I've upped my retinol usage. I do use a prescription strength. You can look online about like over-the-counter benefits versus when you get the prescription variant and it just it's making my skin a little more sensitive. I'm peeling. It's all perfectly normal in the phases of retinol, but I've also really, really, really been making sure to not forget a day of sunscreen, making sure my skin is protected. And this one's really, really pretty. It's, yeah, it just says apply evenly. Y'all know how to use sunscreen. This one's really good and I like this sleek packaging because it doesn't take up a lot of space in a bag. Okay, I bought the Glossier Future Do Oil Serum Hybrid. Now, I tried using this under makeup, like I've seen some of my dry skin friends here on YouTube do, and that is not the best for me. Of course, I have oily skin, surprise, surprise, but I did test it that way. What I have liked doing is on the nights where I am doing retinol is topping everything after it sinks into my skin going in with this oil. This is a serum oil hybrid and it has a lots of goodness in there. Let me read it to you. Okay, I wanted to pull up the oils it has in it because it is recommended for dry skin, but like I said, using it about twice a week on top of my retinol has worked super well for me. This is a lightweight oil. I will give it that. Of course, I can feel it on my skin, but it doesn't feel heavy. It has jojoba oil, grapeseed oil, evening primrose, and rose hip oils, and it does make me look dewy, which I kind of like, you know, getting into bed at night looking all glowy and dewy. I've been enjoying this. I wasn't sure when I bought it. I'm like, I just, I'm so curious. Let me test it. And I'm pleasantly surprised how I've incorporated it into my routine has really been working for me. Okay, almost done. I've also been really upping the use of my Glow Recipe Plum Plunk Hyaluronic Serum. Now, this was a product that I would use occasionally, but I don't think I ever really told y'all like my review of this since buying this months and months and months ago, but I've actually started using this mixed in with my daily moisturizer. I take a pump of my daily moisturizer and then I'll take a pump of this and mix them together together and my skin has been thriving with this. This again is for deep hydration and glow. It is a serum but it's so pretty and it's not too heavy or too much for my oily skin and I love that. I love Glow Recipe so much. Y'all already know. Okay, this is going to seem kind of random, but I bought this Aquaphor Ointment Body Spray, Advanced Therapy Ointment Body Spray, to smooth and relieve dry, rough skin all day. All day. <laughs> Hypoallergenic, preservative, and fragrance-free. Now, 
I don't really struggle with dry skin. I'm pretty oily all over, but in these warmer months, I've been trying to be better about putting on body lotion, making sure I'm not getting too dry. Just sometimes I just don't think about it, but with the heat and all, wearing shorts and stuff, I'm like, I need to moisturize my legs. And sometimes I'm just too tired, too lazy, honestly. And I've liked it this. I saw this, I was like, a spray lotion. Let me just try it. Now, when I'm tired, I don't wanna do nothing. I can definitely just spray this on my legs, spray this on my chest and body. I look glowy, I'm out, like I put on pajamas, I get in bed or I go, it's good. I don't have to rub it in. Now, I do like to rub it in. I think it looks nice that way. It kind of absorbs a little quicker, but what I bought this for it was for those layer day, lazy days where I just wanna spray, go, and I like it. It doesn't feel too heavy and it does feel like it moisturizes me. All right, y'all, those are all the products I had to review for y'all. That was a lot, some good some bad. I hope you liked this video though. This eye look, I am wearing Unearthly Cosmetics Dead of Night. I do have a whole video on this palette if you want some tutorials or anything like that. And then I did film this look. It should be on TikTok, on Instagram, and a YouTube short. If it's not here on YouTube yet, it will be coming. It will be coming very soon. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I would love to know, are you on a low buy or no buy? Have you been shopping your stash? Tell me what you've been reaching for the most if you've fallen in or out of love with the product that you had in your collection. If you've been trying some new things like me, definitely let me know your thoughts. I love hearing what makeup you're loving, what makeup you're hating. Did you try any of these products? Do we feel the same way? Let me know. I am so happy you're here. Please do subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see y'all very soon in another video. Bye.